Our topic today, key terms to indicate origin, style, and quality. Label terminology is an important part of WSET Level 2, but Level 3 also assumes you know these terms and you know what they mean. So let's take on a few Level 2 questions and talk through them as we go. Which of the following is a common label term for Chianti? Ricciotto, Classico, Vintage, Old Vine. With a lot of these questions, you can quickly narrow it down to just two answers. In this case, where the question asks about Chianti, we can quickly set aside Vintage and Old Vine and focus on the two Italian terms that we've learned, Ricciotto and Classico. Now, it can get a little tricky here because we need to know enough about both terms to know which answer is correct. We learn that Rochotto appears on the label of sweet wines that are made with the appassimento method of drying grapes out to concentrate their sugars. But this term is more common for Suave and Valpolicella, not Chianti. The term Classico, which indicates that a wine was made within its original boundaries rather than its updated or expanded boundaries, is our answer. Grand Cru Classé is a labeling term most associated with which region? Casablanca Valley? Bordeaux? Marlboro, Burgundy. Once again, we can set aside two answers right away. Casablanca Valley and Marlboro are both not in France, so they're not likely to be associated with the French Grand Cru Classé term. That leaves Bordeaux and Burgundy, and we are challenged to remember the Grand Cru system in both regions. In Burgundy, we learn that Premier Cru and Grand Cru titles are assigned to vineyards, but in Bordeaux, that status is applied to producers by several classification systems that have been set up in several of Bordeaux's subregions. So that classé element tells us this is Bordeaux, and you can think of classification classé as a way to remember that. What does Vendange Tardive mean on a label of wine from Alsace? Old vine, non-vintage, traditional blend, late harvest. It's not so easy to pick out two wrong answers right away with this one, so we can think back to what we learned about Alsace. Alsace is absolutely influenced by Germany, and its approach to wine demonstrates that, specifically in its focus on ripeness levels as we climb the ladder from the regional Alsace AOP to the Alsace Grand Cru level. When we think about that, we might remember the sweet wines that are made with extra ripe grapes labeled Vendange Tardive. And these wines are made with you guessed it, late harvest fruit. Speaking of late harvest, which of the following indicates a late harvest wine? Spätlese, Trocken, Auslese, Qualitätswein. With what we've learned about Germany, we can quickly set aside Qualitätswein, since that's a simple title for PDL level wines. And if we remember that Trocken means dry, we can set that one aside as well. Of the six Predikatswein categories, Spätlese and Auslese tend to be the hardest to remember, uh, but there are two little tricks that I like to suggest. When we learn about Berenoslese wines, we learn that their level of sweetness is only possible by individually selecting extra ripe berries that have been affected by botrytis. And the second part of that word, Auslese, is the Predikat for wines that are made with individually selected bunches. And the second trick that I like to remember is that Spät rhymes with late. Which grape variety is most associated with the Jevre Chambertin AOP? Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Tempranillo. Our success with this question comes down to whether we recognize Jevre Chambertin. So for now, let's assume that we don't. It's a French name, so we can set aside Tempranillo, but that leaves us with three options. So we're either in Bordeaux with Cabernet Sauvignon, or in Burgundy with Pinot Noir or Chardonnay. Now, Cabernet Sauvignon is very specific to the Medoc in Bordeaux, so if we think about Poyac, Margot, pessac léognon Jevre Chambertin is not one of those appellations, so let's think Burgundy. So if it's Burgundy, we have to remember which villages produce red wines and which produce white wines. And it all comes down to memorization. So Pouligny Montrachet and Merceau produce white wines, and Jevre Chambertin and Nuit Saint-Georges produce red wines. So our answer is Pinot Noir. Which region is most likely to varietally label its wines? saint emilion Marlboro, Chianti, Rioja. As we learned, the PDO system in Europe defines not only where a wine comes from, but how it's made, and that often includes which varieties can be used. So in effect, a PDO tells you the variety if you know what to look for. With New World wines, it's very common for a wine to indicate the variety, so we just need to spot the New World region. 
Santa Mignon, Chianti, and Rioja are all Old World regions, so we're left with Marlborough as our correct answer. The terms Hoven, Crianza, Reserva, and Gran Reserva are most associated with which region? Chianti, Rios Baixas, Rioja, Bordeaux. Right away, let's cross off Chianti and Bordeaux because these are Spanish terms that we're working with here. So we learned that these four terms are indicators of age, and if we think about the wine styles from Rias Baixas and Rioja, that gives us our answer. Rias Baixas is known for its fresh styles of Albarino, and Rioja is known for its red wines. So that gives us our answer, Rioja. So how did you do? When it comes to labels, there's a lot to memorize, but with a little practice, it all falls into place. Two quick ideas for getting that practice in. One, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And two, if you're on iOS, check the description below for a link to the True Wine app where you'll find a Duolingo style course specifically on wine label terminology that'll help you get confident and ready for your exam. And that's all for now. In the meantime, cheers to you.